variation in y um, by x2 and also we've removed the accounted for variation in x1 by x2 so we've removed this shared variation and what's left over here okay what's left over here uh, is what we call the partial correlation okay this is the partial correlation between y and x1 where we've just controlled for x2 now one way we could do this, and we'll have a look at that later on. Okay, one way we could do this is we could we could build a regression model. Okay, uh, we could build a regression model, uh, and we could look at a simple regression between y and x two. Okay, but more importantly, we could look at the residuals. Okay, because the residuals, okay, the residuals would give us just this piece here without this x two piece, if that makes sense. Okay, uh, and then we could have a look at a, a regression between x one and x two. Okay? And we look at, look at the residuals as well associated with that. In other words, do you want to count it for variation in X1 uh, uh, that's not accounted for by X2? And then we can correlate. So, so this section here, this Y section, is effectively the residual Okay, the residual from the current from the regression of y with x2. Okay, because this is what this this area here is what x2 cannot explain, if that makes sense. And similarly, this red area here, okay, is the residual. It's it's what x2 cannot explain with respect to x1 when we regress when 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 when, when we regress these two variables, if that makes sense. And effectively, what we have now is we have a set of residuals here, a set of residuals here. And what we do is we correlate them together, and this is called the partial correlation between y and x1, okay, controlling for x2. In other words, above and beyond the influence that x2 has on y, and also above and beyond the influence that x2 has on x1. Okay. Now we could say to ourselves, okay, well, I know now that x, I also know that x1 is related to y, and x1 is related to uh, x2. But what is the correlation between x2? x2 and y if we eliminate the association of x1 okay and this is another partial correlation okay so what once it once we've what we've also done here is we've removed the influencing the influence of x1 on y and we've also removed the influence of x1 on x2 okay and what's left over this y piece here okay and this x2 piece here is what's correlated together and this is called the partial correlation between y and x2 controlling for the effect of x1 if that makes sense okay? Once again, if we want to do that, the best way to do that is, okay, well, this blue area here, okay, this blue area here, uh, we could regress Y on X1 and look for the residuals, okay, that would be this blue area, okay, uh, and also we could regress we could regress X2 and X1, okay, and look at its residuals, and that would be the green area around here, okay, so now we have two sets of residuals, and what we do is we correlate them two together, which gives us the partial correlation between Y and X2 controlling for X1, okay. So, so at this stage, we've got two types of correlations. We've got a simple, uh, a simple correlation or a zero order correlation where we look at the effect of one variable on another variable, okay? uh, or the interaction, the strength of association between two variables, irrespective of any other variable. Then we have a partial correlation where we take another variable into consideration okay? and we remove its, influencing its influence uh, from both of the variables that I want to correlate. Okay? So for example, in this case, I'm removing the influence of x1 from y, and I'm also removing the influence of x1 from x2, and what's left over is what's correlated. Okay? Uh, and when I say I'm removing the influence, I'm removing the accounted for variation. Okay? So what's left over is the unaccounted for variation, which is defined by the residuals uh, within a regression model. Okay? And then finally, just moving along now, we have the concept of what's known as a part correlation. Okay? So a part correlation looks something like this. Okay? We know that there's a relationship between x1 and x2. Okay? They're related. Okay? So what we do is we just remove the association between x2 and x1. So we remove that. There it is gone now. Okay? And what I'm left with is I'm left with x1 here. Okay? Once again, this is just the residuals. Okay, this red piece here okay, is the residual of a regression of x1 with x2. Okay? It's the residuals after we remove x2 okay, from, from, from x1. And then what we do is we have a look at the correlation between y and the residuals of x1 with x2. Okay? And this is called a part correlation. Okay? So this is our part correlation. You can actually see that what differentiates part correlation from partial correlation is that the effect of x2, okay, the effect of x2 here on y, 
okay? The effect of x2 on y, okay, this thing here, okay, this effect here, okay, hasn't been removed, okay? And that's what we call a part, cor a part correlation. And we could do the same thing with x2 uh, and y. We could, remove, we could remove the effect of x2, we could remove the effect of x1 from x2, okay, which leaves us with this here, and then we could correlate between y and x2, which gives us the part correlation between y and x2. Okay, that's that. That's the end of that slideshow there. And uh, maybe what I'll do here is I will just have a look. Um, I have an SPSS file, okay, uh, where we could actually have a look at this. Actually, maybe what I'll do is I'll do that in the next video, yeah, which is having a look at how to generate the residuals, how to do the correlations the part correlations and the partial correlations and the zero order correlations uh, through SPSS. I'll have a look at that in my next video. Okay. Uh, well, guys, once again, this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and I hope that this video was intuitive. And more importantly, I hope that was helpful for you. Thank you for watching.